Yes, they live what they sing, and I appreciate that. Uh, so they are from Alabama, from right down the road in Southside, Alabama. Would you give a nice warm welcome to the Mark Trammell Quartet?
This world has moved from its foundation. Trials in this trouble that show it will never last. It must be leaving town. For I can see the sounds interrupted by the trumpet and the shout. Walking with the Lord each day, walking with the Lord each day. 
pillow Toss me from side to side Oh, what if the waves that I'm facing God has every intention to use To steer my course and destination And move me closer to you evening and uh, I'll tell you that it's not about us tonight it truly is not we just happen to decide that if we're going to sing on New Year's Eve we just soon do in Alabama as anywhere in the world so that's what we're doing and yeah. and if we was going to sing New Year's Eve this year we didn't have a good reason until I found out the Premier Quartet was available and uh, since this is going to be one of their last appearances uh, in the state of Alabama before they retire. Uh, I thought it was a really good idea, and I, uh, I conferred with my uh, promotion partner over there at the piano, and we decided to have the privilege here tonight and let them Amen. do all the singing they want to do. And I'm going to go and uh, Somewhere around uh, the middle part of 1978, I believe it was, maybe the latter part, uh, I stopped on my way back toward town from the home of Ernie Phillips. Y'all remember Ernie, the son yeah. of the Kingsman? Yep. I was there and a part of that group uh, for a couple of years. And I left his house and then drove by this poultry shop on Emma Road in Asheville, North Carolina. And there was this nice looking, newer model bus sitting there. And of course, I had just gone to the Kingsman so, and very young, and I, everything quartet was my world. And I thought, that's a quartet bus out there. I'm gonna stop and see who it is. And I did. I got out and I walked up front and I believe it was Norman Wilson was standing in the front. They just put the headliner in that bus. They were converting it so they could travel in it. They did for many years. And uh, I believe it was Norman. I stood there and held the buttons and talked to him and he didn't even know who I was. <laughs> and didn't care. Had this biggest smile on his face. And I'm standing there holding them buttons, and he's pushing them buttons in that headliner so it'll stay up in place. And I met those men that day. And I'm going to tell you something. This many years later, they're still the same fellas now that they Amen. were. Amen. Amen. Godly people. Yes, sir. Love the Lord. Love pinto beans and cornbread. <laughs> 
plain old sweet iced tea, plain old ordinary folks. And that's what I grew up around. And I learned to love those men that day. And they've been dear friends of mine ever since then. And that's why we are celebrating them and their 50 years of ministry right here in Boaz tonight. And uh, they'll be coming out in just a little bit. But before they do, how many have never seen us before tonight? That's you. Raise your hand. Okay, there's a few here. Okay, I'll start with this phone here. Real quick, like, let me do this. This is our tenor singer. He has been now for three years. Uh, just over, actually, three years. And uh, he's been married for a year and a half. Yeah. And uh, his wife is here tonight. In fact, his, his wife's parents are also here tonight. So you be on your best behavior. <laughs> when the in-laws are in town, you behave even more than you do when they're not. Okay? I know you're old and bald-headed, but I'm just trying to put some wisdom in there. Okay? Uh, he, he is uh, one of the finest singers I've been around in many years, and uh, some of you already know that because you've heard him, but I will tell you, one of the finest men that I know as well, and his name is Stephen Adair. Welcome our <laughs> in line. His family is here tonight as well, and uh, I, I, I saw that the, they're up in uh, the crow's nest back there in the back, and the reason they are is because uh, Mom decided to bring my brand new grandson. So he's back there as well, and I'm going to tell you, I keep looking up there thinking he's just going to wave at Papa in a minute. And there he went, right there. See that? And uh, if you want to see three perfect grandchildren, I have those. And they will be on display right after it's over. <laughs> and for $10 a person, you can talk to them. <laughs> I'm teasing. You like that, did yeah, you? Yeah, I'm sure you did. But this is the proud father of those three, and Mama's back there holding that little one. And uh, some of my very favorite people on planet Earth. I will just tell you that, but uh, an awesome singer, awesome songwriter, right here, standing right next to me. Yes, sir. And just recently celebrated his 10-year anniversary yeah. uh, with Dad, and Dad never dreamed that he'd be here, but he's been here 10 years now. Amen. And I thought I was finished feeding him. I wasn't at all. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, you're just getting started. <laughs> you glad to see Dick Trammell tonight. Welcome to <laughs> The newest member of our crowd is this one right here. And I've had more fun since he got here than I've had in the last 20 years. And the reason I have is because I, there's two things this boy thinks about. Singing bass and eating. <laughs> and they're not necessarily in that order. I've never met anybody that likes food so much that while we're eating breakfast, he's looking at his phone trying to decide where we're gonna have lunch. I am not making that up. That is a fact that my hand up, as Wendy Bagwell used to say. And how many of y'all know Wendy Bagwell? Who Wendy Bagwell is? Oh, more than I thought. Okay. The rest of you, if you don't know, Google it. You can find that for yourself. Okay. Uh, but this one is our new bass singer. And uh, one day I got a phone call from a fellow uh, that you saw just a little while ago. And he made a statement to me. If you're looking for a really good bass singer, I know one. I said, okay, who is it? He told me. I said, uh, yeah, but he sings with a really good quartet. He said, yeah, he does. But if you're looking for a really good bass singer, I know one. What they knew is I didn't know. And they had all kinds of fun with me because they knew what was about to take place and I didn't have a clue. But when I found out, it was bittersweet for me because our industry lost a really good quartet but our quartet gained a really good bass singer. So we're happy. And uh, I'm really happy that he was willing to come and uh, stand next to a gray-headed old man that don't even know where he is most of the time. And uh, if you will, pray for him because he's stuck with me now. And his name is Will Blaine. Welcome, Will. <laughs> Uh, 
the one that I love pick on the most in our group. He's 24 years old for just a few more months. And uh, he's so excited, so he's tore up, actually, yeah. about turning 25. <laughs> I'm never, I mean, I, I'm not tore up about my next birthday at all. I'm not even gonna tell you what it is, ain't none of your business. <laughs> but I will tell you, he's tore up about uh, uh, April, he'll be 25 years old. I asked him not long ago, he said it half a dozen times, I said, Trevor, why are you so excited about turning 25. He said, my car insurance will go down. <laughs> Which let me know immediately that mom and daddy don't pay his car insurance. <laughs> and you glad to see Trevor Conkle from ARAP. Late spring, and uh, you all people, 
just like you, folks just like you come to the table and start asking for songs that uh, I sang when, back when I had a good memory. <laughs> it's been a long time ago. And uh, songs that I haven't sung in years. And, and it's, while it, it, it's gratifying, it truly is. Uh, you don't comprehend the fact that it's been 25 or 30 years since I've sung them. And uh, you got to go back to 40 before I can sing every word to songs. 40 years ago, I can sing all of them. The ones we have on the new project, I keep having them to help me with the words. Yeah. I don't understand that, don't comprehend it, other than my hair is now platinum blonde. <laughs> That's got to have something to do with it, I'm real sure, because before my hair turned platinum blonde, I was able to sing most of the songs we knew. I can't sing these, but I think we can get through this one. So, and it's gonna feature uh, Will, and it's gonna feature Steven. And before you ask, yes, it is going to be our, on our next project. So listen close, and uh, you may even remember this one. See if you do.
So, uh, uh, forgive me if I've run out of breath, boys. It's your fault. You let me off too long this, this year. Uh, but I can fix that. Uh, tell you what, let's do. Uh, uh, I, want, I want to sing a song that Nick wrote for our Amen. Amen. Yep. Yep. Yes, sir. And, uh, everywhere we go, it, it's one of the, it, it's got a very simple message. Yep. And it's one of the simplest songs that we've seen. In right. fact, uh, it reminds me uh, a whole lot of uh, the kind of song that Larry Gatlin used to write uh, when it comes to the music in the song. And uh, if the Gatlins would record a gospel album today, uh, this could be on that album really easy because it sounds just like them, but it's got a great gospel message. Yes, sir. And when he wrote it and brought it to me, uh, I just looked at him and grinned. I said, I can tell you grew up in my car. <laughs> he said, why is that? I said, because that sounds like the Gatlin brothers right there. And I used to listen to them a lot. See, I, it, it's, it's New Year's Eve, so it's a really good time to confess and get to sleep. 
And I did like country music at one time. Back when it was actually country music. Yes. But anyway, uh, it was secondary. The gospel was still primary. But uh, I did like them because I, they, you could tell they grew up in church, singing in church. I could always tell that before I knew it, before I knew them. And uh, Larry Gatlin is a friend, and he's probably one of the craziest people I know. <laughs> well, he's a great singer. He ain't nowhere near as good a golfer as he thinks he is. <laughs> and I can witness that, too. But uh, that's not what we're here to talk about. Let's, let's sing this song and see if you don't think it sounds like something they would have done. Amen. For the life of me.